Hello everybody and welcome back to Mr. Price's online virtual history classroom. Uh, today we're going to talk about early societies in Western Africa. Uh, we're completely shifting gears um, from the European, Asian um, history that we've been talking a lot about here recently and we're going to go into Africa. What's going on in Western Africa? We're going to cover a wide range of years here. So uh, before we talk about uh, specific civilizations, we have to, to cover geography because geography influences how people live. Um, so we're gonna talk about the geography of Western Africa first, what it actually looks like, and then we'll go into more specifics. So hopefully everyone is ready to go and we'll, we'll go ahead and get started. Early societies in West Africa, geography and trade, lesson 21.1. So uh, people were living in Western Africa for thousands of years. However, we didn't really know much about ancient uh, Western Africans because there was almost no written records at all. So if nothing is written down uh, and there's no one to tell the story, that these things just kind of get lost in translation. Um, so the first writings that we found about Western African uh, tribes and civilizations was written by Muslims in the 1800s. So um, Muslim culture obviously began in the Middle East, so that means they were heading west into this Western Africa area, and when they got there, they were able to write down what was going on, stories, traditions, way of life. Um, so historians had to study clues to figure out what was happening in Western Africa for these thousands of years. And they studied geography. They, they, they try to use the geography around them to figure out what they could have done. And they studied rivers, the flow, uh, vegetation, how old the trees are, how old um, just all the plants and, and all the greens are in the area. Um, the vegetation, the, the rivers, there was a lot of clues, the artifacts that these geographers had to study. So um, what makes a, a, a old uh, ancient civilization take the next step was iron tools. And if, if a tribe was using iron tools, that means they were uh, more sophisticated because it, it made their life way more efficient, especially in farming. Um, and efficient means a better way with little waste. So I want to think of, think of a situation when you are uh, being more efficient. Um, how about when you say you're you're making I don't know mashed potatoes, all right, and you cut up five potatoes for yourself, and then you you eat I don't know a decent portion, but you realize there's a ton of leftovers, and you're you're just end up throwing them away. Um, that's not really an efficient way of eating. Maybe just making enough for one for yourself for right now um, would be an efficient way of eating those mashed potatoes. So um, iron tools made. Uh, farming more efficient. Right? So between the, uh, 500 CE, so 500 years after zero, to 600, 1600 CE, three separate kingdoms emerged in Western Africa. Ghana, Songhai, and Mali. All right, so um, they're all kind of in the same area as you notice. They're all kind of in the same area, but the reason is because they're in different years between the range of 500 to 1600. And the one we'll talk about most is Ghana here coming up, um, but that will still be a little ways away. All right, so we'll dive into Ghana um, and the, how they became a power in Western Africa, but first more geography of the territory because geography impacted their everyday lives. The reason why the uh, civilizations were uh, able to emerge in this area is because of the geography. So West Africa had the Sierra Sahara in the north, the Sahara, I should say. And it's a hot, large African desert. The Sahara Desert was very large. Look at this. Um, it covers all the way from Egypt all the way west until it borders the Atlantic Ocean over here. So this Sahara Desert is massive, all right? As you can imagine, a desert is hot with not a lot living in it. 
makes it hard for travel because of the lack of shade, uh, because of the lack of food, the lack of water, uh, just the brutal conditions. Okay. So the, you're right, the Atlantic Ocean is on the left and the south, the west and south of Western Africa here. So we have the Atlantic Ocean. Um, and then we have a mountain range down by where modern day Cameroon is. So the mountain range would be right over here. So we have mountains, we have a desert, and we're gonna talk about what's going on in between the mountains and the desert as well, because the geography of Africa changes so often. Not, not like the desert's gonna turn into something, but the more south you go, it'll change. The more south you go, it'll change. The more south you go, it'll change. So uh, we're going to talk about the, each little areas and how it affected the people of West Africa. Uh, they had many vegetation zones, as I was kind of referring to. Uh, the desert, uh, the semi-desert, a savanna, and a forest. Okay. So the Sahara is 3.5 million square feet long. And that is up above this uh, orange line here. Uh, 3.5 million square feet. Absolutely mind-blowing, massive, hard to wrap your head around how big this desert is. It's mostly dry and not suitable for settlements. You can't have your, uh, you can't start a, a village and farms and this whole um, civilization in the middle of a desert. All right. Uh, South of the Sahara is the, the Sahil. And then um, that is this orange line right here. And that is a semi-desert with short grasses and trees. So it, it's a desert, but it's a little bit more suitable for living. We have short grasses. Trees are able to grow there. All right. So the Sahil is a lot easier to live in. And it's just only a semi-desert compared to the uh, Sahara, which is a um, real full-blown desert. So uh, Sahil emerges into the savanna, and that is the next uh, thing going south. A savanna is a tall grassy area with long raining seasons. There's a lot of rain in the savanna, a lot of grass, a lot of things growing. Um, good for farming because grains like rice thrive there. And rice can feed a lot of people. Okay, so the savanna is huge in Africa. Um, grasses provide food for camels, for cattle, for other animals, uh, based on travel, for food, everything. Uh, so the savanna was a very important um, geograph like a geographical piece of Africa. Um, it also ran through the uh, Niger River. river. Uh, it was fertilized land. It provided fish. The river is super important. Uh, everything kind of uh, developed because of the Niger River. Just like the Nile River in Africa, it was the most important piece to why civilization started. So the Niger River is the longest river in Western Africa. Okay. So we have two major rivers on each side, and that's where the population really bloomed in Africa. So the Niger River extends into a forest zone, which is even wetter than a savanna. A forest zone would look like this on the top right, uh, very, very wet, uh, trees everywhere, shrubs growing on top of each other. Here's a, a map of where the Niger River runs. Um, it kind of goes up through modern day where Mali is and back down into um, the Atlantic Ocean. So a woodland forest with trees and shrubs. Uh, the rainforest would even be below this with even taller trees and more swamps and more lagoons and more water with a bunch of different animals. Um, so we have just a wide range of a desert, a semi-desert, uh, to a savanna, to a woodland forest, to just a full-blown rainforest. See how, how the more south you go, how different Africa looks. So trade became a so uh, just a huge paramount importance here in Western Africa because of the different patterns of trade, um, different resources in each climate zone. 
Okay, you're not going to find the same thing in the desert that you find in a rainforest or a savanna. Um, so people started trading with each other to uh, trade resources that one person has that the other person doesn't. Just like you would in the lunchroom if you have uh, someone has a I don't know, piece of pizza that you want to trade for a, a dessert of some sort, like a maybe a chocolate chip cookie, then you can make that trade. But th that's how the people worked here. It's like, okay, we have um, a bunch of rice. We have a bunch of gold. We want to trade for um, iron. So that's what the people would be doing. They'd be trading with each other. Um, they had to trade for goods that they didn't have. So the, the easiest way to trade in this Western African area was the Niger River because highways, they were like the, it became like a trading highway, the river, because it's so much easier to um, transport and at a higher speed on a boat than it is on land because they don't have any cars. So they're walking or riding uh, animals like a camel. So a, a boat goes a lot quicker. So this uh, Niger River made it a lot easier to trade. And most trades stayed within Western Africa. It was just tribes trading with other tribes inside um, the continent. All right. And canoes were used on the river. Canoes were the boats usually used for trade because of their quick, um, because of their quick speeds. Um, that was the fastest thing that they had. All right, so you can see how geography is really impacting how people are li living, where they're living, what they're growing, what they're trading, and how civilizations emerged here in Western Africa. All right, um, that hopefully that gives you a little basis of what's going on here in Western Africa. Maybe it gives you a little different idea that the whole thing is not just a desert, as some people think, um, as we have all these different climate zones um, and uh, vegetation zones here in Western Africa. All right, uh, that is it for today. Until next time, so long, everybody.